if you want to see the full axle build, you can go to the playlist and look it up under Ultimate Eight and a Quarter Build, and you can see the whole build. How's it going, everybody? I'm Cherokee Ronnie. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about the disc brake conversion that I did on the Jeep Cherokee. The number one question I get: Do I need to buy this? Should I get this? The internet says this. Blah 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 blah. We debunked some of the stuff when it came to the brake swap. A lot of people said you need a proportion of valve um, for your master cylinder or whatever. Um, I didn't need none of that. The only thing that I did was swap the backing plates and put these brakes on and blood them and went. And I've drove this Jeep for a year like that and it has not slid down the road in the rain like they talk about or um, it has not wrecked. It has now has not malfunctioned in any way. It, it worked just like any other brake swap or upgrade that there is. It stops just like my Wrangler. It has calipers in the back also. So today I'm going to be showing you how easy and how quick it can be to actually do this. Um, if you don't know how to take out the center pin in an eight and a quarter, I recommend watching videos or if you don't feel comfortable with it, this job's not for you because it's a little bit in depth. You got to take the center pin out, pull your axles, and then take off the backing plates. And then when you get everything back together, you got to put all that stuff back in and bleed your brakes. If you don't know how to do none of that, you might want to watch some videos or get a buddy or take it somewhere to have it done. Because I highly recommend this upgrade with the Cherokee, especially if you're running 35s like I am and you're going off-road. Especially when you're driving down the road um, and you're you know going to speed limit somebody brake checks you and you slam on your brakes with drum brakes you slow down but it's slow when it comes to the disc brake conversion you slow down like you're supposed to so if you're running big tires i do recommend this swap all the parts will be in the description below where you can buy this also the backing plates i bought at a junkyard and honestly that's the way i would go because they're really expensive because people are doing the swap and uh, it's causing the prices to go up so go to the junkyard we have a pool part uh, in ohio that i go to or a pickup city in west virginia and you can get them for like 40 bucks so let's go out here check it out and i'll show you how i did it so you want to go ahead and heat up the area where the bolt goes through because these are known to snap off so take a little map torch heat her up pop her loose don't stop until the bolt's out push in on your axle after you got your center pin out and your c-clip will fall out and you pull it out and there it is so basically all i did was cut all this stuff out and then took a 13 millimeter wrench push the e-brake through here i'm just taking off the backing plates after i got all the other stuff out i was rebuilding this axle so that's why it's out of the jeep um, you can go back and watch the ultimate eight and a quarter build but you can do this under your jeep just fine so what I'm doing, I'm taking the other side off. And after I get these off, I uh, take a hammer and I just beat the studs out because you got to buy new bolts uh, from Tractor Supplier Ace Hardware. All the information is in the description below. So I went ahead and pounded those out. So these backing plates are off of Jeep Liberty and they fit on their perfect, no modifications. All I do is put them on there, take your new bolts that you got and go ahead and zip them on. Pretty self-explanatory. Now I did get the new e-brake stuff for the inside when I got my rotors and stuff, but I was just going ahead and putting it together while I was here with the axle. All right, we got both sides on, but a lot of people say you had to uh, notch these bolts, and I didn't have to. And I use the same size bolts that come out of it and what they recommend, and I didn't have to notch them. And I used these nuts here that have the neoprene in them, also with some blue Loctite. Here I'm just test fitting the calipers. I want to see how they set on there and everything bolts together because I did buy these off a cheaper site. I didn't buy them from the parts store, so I'm wanting to see how they fit and make sure everything goes together properly before I continue with the build. The notch on this that usually sets against 
the caliper here. Well, you don't have to use that. Um, I just flipped it around because you see that it has the steel marks on both sides. So it doesn't matter. This honestly just keeps it from spinning. Um, but it shouldn't spin. Here's the part number, made in China. Let's go ahead and stick it on. All right, we got the everything all buttoned up on both sides. The wheels are on and all the cables are hooked up. So this thing stops on a dime. But running these big 35s and using the stock brakes in the front, because when a lot of people do the back, they swap the WJ knuckles in the front. Just by doing the back disc brakes, this thing stops really, really well for 35s. I'm impressed. I like it. And plus, if I break an axle, it's not going to fly out with the eight and a quarter. You don't have to worry about that. And she's built and ready to go. Basically, it's pretty self-explanatory. I didn't want to go into a 30-minute video like everybody else does. And they say you need to do this and do that. And they mumble around, fumble around. I just want to get to the point and show you what you had to do and what you needed to do it. Now, all the parts that I bought... I am very satisfied with. Um, they are cheaper parts, um, and you can get them off Amazon and eBay. Very happy with them. They still are perfectly fine. That's on the Jeep. They haven't blowed out under the hoses, blowed out. None of that stuff has went wrong for me. It's still working. Um, so yeah, if you want to go down in the description below and get those parts, feel free to do that because um, they're quality parts for the price you get, and especially this day and age, how everything goes up, this is the way to go. I'm overall really happy with the way it turned out and how easy this swap is, and you can do it on a budget. Um, you don't have to spend tons of money to uh, do this swap, and that's what I like about uh, this upgrade is it's a really, really nice upgrade for cheap. So, uh I recommend going to the junkyard for the backing plates and all that stuff. Um, you could even go to the junkyard and get calipers, and they will probably work. I just wanted to get new calipers to be on the safe side and new hoses. But you can do this swap a whole lot cheaper than I did if you get everything at the jump junkyard. Um, but honestly, I've not had a problem with it. Even the way I ran the hoses, as you see in the video, I ran the hoses up. I've not had a problem with anything jabbing into it or at least springs hitting it honestly has stay right there and uh i'm going to end up welding a little mount for it to go like how it's supposed to clip in the hose i'm going to weld a little mount on the uh leaf spring plate um but honestly i haven't messed with it and it's been perfectly fine so go down in the description below get all the parts um or get a piece of paper write those parts down that you need um always remember every jeep is different so it, you might run into a little bit more problems than I've ran into. Um, so prepare yourself for that and uh, make sure you plan ahead. Write everything down. If you're buying everything in a junkyard, write it down and buy it there. You do the swap for pretty much nothing. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. I'm Cherokee Ronnie. Stay dirty, my friends.